In the first order case, we evaluated the response by solving for the differential equation sort of from scratch. In the second order case, we used what is known as the characteristic equation. Okay. Now, these two are uh, linked and in this lesson, we will see the link between two. First, let me consider a first order system, although in this lesson, the focus is on the second order system. So, again, we can take this circuit as an example of a general first order system. Okay. Now, in this case, the differential equation for V C is given by this and the natural response is evaluated by solving for the source free case. Okay. Now, if you assume that V C is some exponential P times T, okay, substituting it in here we get R C times P times exponential P T plus exponential P T equals 0 and we can have a coefficient V naught here and that does not change anything, V naught appears in both places. Now, this will be identically equal to 0 only if this multiplying factor of the exponential is 0. So, this part has to be equal to 0 or in other words, P is minus 1 by R C. Okay. So, we get the result which we are already very familiar with that the natural response is some V naught exponential minus T by R C. So, this is the characteristic equation and the root of the characteristic equation P is minus 1 by R C and it has dimensions of frequency. This is as you expect because the argument of the exponential is P times T which should be dimensionless. So, P has dimensions of 1 over time or frequency. Okay. Then, we see that the time constant in a first order case the time constant tau which is R C is minus 1 by P. Okay. Minus 1 over the root of the characteristic equation. So, we can use this in general for higher order equations also as we did for the second order equation. We have already found the solution to the second order equation. Here, I am trying to relate it to the first order case so that we get some more insights into our solutions. Now, in a second order case, we have a second order differential equation let us say this is the differential equation in the relevant variable Now, for the natural response, the right hand side is substituted with 0. Okay, So, I will not worry about it and I have normalized the left hand side. So, that the coefficient of V C is 1. Okay, This is just for convenience. Now, this second order equation can be written as a combination of two first order equations. So,
that is we go from the input to some uh, variable vx and from there to vc now it is easier to understand in a picture so let's say we had a second order system with some vs as the input and vc as the output we can think of it as two first order systems one after another with vs as the input and vc as the output and this intermediate output is called vx okay and for the natural response we set vs to be zero okay it turns out this kind of picture makes it convenient to figure out the nature of the solution in this case as well okay so the characteristic equation here if you assume a solution of the type vc is some v not exponential pt the characteristic equation would be a2 times p square plus a1 times p plus 1 is 0 so every derivative term will have a p and nth order derivative will have p to the n now the characteristic equation of this is b1 times p plus 1 is 0 and this is b2 times p plus 1 is 0 now this has some roots p1 and p2 it has two roots okay because it's a second order equation now this has a single root p1 is minus 1 by b1 and similarly this has another root p2 is minus 1 by b2 so the two roots of the characteristic equation now become one of them is the root of this and the other one is the root of that one okay now if you combine these two into the second order dif differential equation you have to get exactly the same coefficients in a circuit with real components these coefficients will be real okay but these two need not be real because this vx refers to some fictitious output which is not really accessible so these could be real but could also be complex conjugates okay so both these possibilities exist that we know already from the second order equation that this can have roots which are real and distinct real and identical or complex conjugates okay now remember b1 and b2 will not be some arbitrary complex numbers they will be complex conjugates because the eventual equation has only real coefficients so the two solutions p1 and p2 if they are complex at all will be complex conjugates of each other okay so what does this mean if you think of this as a cascade of two first order systems and let me consider first the natural response okay so that is the input is zero now the first one here had a characteristic equation b2 times p plus 1 is zero so this p2 is minus 1 by b1 okay now the natural response of this would be just exponential p2 t okay now if you think of the second first order system it is being driven by an exponential okay i will omit the scaling factors everywhere okay because i just want to point out the nature of the solution so now the solution here is the response the total response to an exponential input okay the input to the second block is exponential p2 times t and this has a characteristic equation b1p plus 1 equals 0 uh, whose root is p1 is minus 1 by b1 okay so the force response of this consists of its natural response as well as the input exponential okay now let's assume first that p1 and p2 are distinct and real okay if they are distinct they will be necessarily real then 
this will consist of first of all the input exponential scaled by some value so it will have something times exponential p 2 t plus its own natural response which is something times exponential p 1 t. Okay? So, the natural response of the first stage is the driving input to the second stage and that also appears as it is. Now, let us imagine a second case where p 1 and p 2 are real and identical. Okay? This happens in the quadratic equation when when a 2 square is 4 times a 1. Okay? So, then what happens is this p 1 and p 2 are uh, both identical. So, the output here which is the natural response of the first order system is exponential p 1 t because p 2 is the same as p 1. Now, we know that when a system is driven by its own uh, natural response, the output will be of the form a 1 plus a 2 t times exponential p 1 t. It will get multiplied by this t which grows with time because a system has a certain natural frequency. If it is excited by its own natural response, then the multiplying factor tends to blow up over time. Okay? So, this gives you the idea that the solution in this case is of the form a 1 plus a 2 t exponential p 1 t. There is only one p 1, p 2 equals p 1. In the other case, it is a 1 exponential p 1 t plus a 2 exponential p 2 t. And finally, when p 1 and p 2 are complex conjugates, okay, then also it is the same as the distinct and real case except that p 1 and p 2 are related in some way. Now, remember here the output will be exponential p 2 t which is a complex number really but this is some fictitious case. This is not an accessible point in the circuit. We have just mathematically split up the second order system into two first order systems. But here you will get exponential p 2 t plus exponential p 1 t. So, we will have a 1 exponential p 1 t plus a 2 exponential p 2 t and p 2 will be p 1 conjugate which also means that a 2 has to be a 1 conjugate for a real solution. Okay? So, that is how we get the different cases for the natural response of a second order system. Okay? Now, let us consider the force response and let me again consider some exponential s t as the input. Okay? So, now you can imagine many different cases. First, I will take S is different from uh, P 1, which is also different from P 2. Okay? So, they are all distinct. So, then at this point, what will we get? We get the total response to an exponential. So, instead of exponential P 2 T, we would have got something times exponential S T plus something times exponential P 2 T. And here, we will get the input exponentials scaled by some number. So, we will get something times exponential s t plus something times exponential p 2 t plus the natural response of uh, the second stage which is something times exponential p 1 t. Okay? So, the total response would be a 1 exponential p 1 t plus a 2 exponential p 2 t plus something times exponential s t. And this something can be evaluated by substituting exponential s t in the solution to the differential equation and solving for the resulting equation. Okay? Now, similarly, if I have exponential s t as the input when uh, p 1 and p 2 are complex conjugates of each other and I will assume that s is not equal to either p 1 or p 2, we will simply get plus exponential s t. And similarly, if uh, the p 1 and p 2 are real and identical, but uh, s is not equal to p 1, we will simply get plus exponential s t. But these are not the only possibilities. For instance, in this case, I could have s equals p 1 or s equals p 2. 
So if s equals p1, we will get a1 plus a3 t times exponential p1 t. Okay, plus exponential p2 t. Similarly, if s equals p2, we will have this coefficient of t multiplying exponential p2 t. Okay, and similarly. In this case, in the second case, p1 and p2 are already identical. If s happens to be equal to p1, then we will get a1 plus a2t plus a3t square exponential p1t. Okay, so we get a t square term as well. And finally, in this case, it's possible that s is equal to either p1 or p2. And again, we have the same cases here. Okay, we could get a1 plus a two t exponential p one t plus a two exponential p two t and so on. So there are many different possibilities. Now I'm just going to only qualitatively outline all these other exotic possibilities. Finally, when it comes to force response of more complicated systems, we will not be evaluating them in a general way. We can do that by by using exponential s t. And later, after you learn about Laplace transforms, you will see that any signal can be represented as an integral of exponential s t over s over different frequencies. That will let you solve the equations more generally. In our case, we will only consider the DC input case and the sinusoidal input case. In the sinusoidal input case, it turns out, can be solved much more easily uh, without even writing down the differential equation. That will come to later. Okay, but this should give you an idea of the nature of uh, the solutions. When you have a second-order system, mainly you can have two separate exponentials with real frequencies p1 and p2, or you can have a1 plus a2t times exponential p1t, and finally you can have this case where you have complex conjugates, which will eventually add up to some sinusoids. Okay.